Hello, hello, everybody. It's 1027 a.m. Central Time on the 8th of August, 2022. Hope you're doing well. Just jumping on to say hi, bring you up to speed seismically as to what's going on. Also to talk about a little news over here on the East Coast over at uh, the Hudson River bubbling from a couple weeks ago, and I got to talk about that in relation to something that I saw on Monkey Works channel last week. But before we get into that, let's just talk about the deep earthquakes really quick down here below the West Pacific again. Letter D, forecast point, where we watch for new deep earthquakes to pop off. Right in the middle of the letter D, new deep earthquake, 4.4, 4.8. Also, new deep earthquake activity yesterday down below Japan again, on top of the 6.1 that struck up here next to Hokkaido. You see it at 5.8 from the USGS. So it came in 6.1, downgraded to 5.8. Europeans came in at 5.9. If you take the 5.9 or 5.8 plus all the other fives, we are definitely at the mid-range 6 level. If you go look at the station lists for this from the USGS, you're going to find a boatload of 6s reported on all the stations. Going up to 6.4 is where the average is. We threw out the high ends and threw out the low ends. And that's how you get to 6.4. So USGS, I'm telling you guys, there's something weird going on over there. Don't even want to get into it. Let's also talk real quick about the other spread of earthquakes filling in our middle points. If you watched my last update, these spots were open. There, again, there were no earthquakes there a few days ago. Now we're filled in at the middle points. Each middle point has been filled in with a 5.1 to 5.6. Once we get beyond Papua New Guinea, we take a split two-way direction, one up to the north, one over to the west. The one up to the north is following the plate boundary, going right through Philippines, back up to where the 7.0 earthquake struck about a week and a half ago. 7.0 quake struck in North Philippines right here. Two days after the 7.0 quake, on the other side of the plate, this diamond shape here, up here on the northeast side, right next to Tokyo, a big outbreak took place, going up to 5.7 to 5.8, plus a bunch of other smaller 4s and 5s, prompting me to issue the warning for the coast of Fukushima. The coast of Fukushima was hit twice, with a 5.4 and a 5.0, added together it equals 5.5, then another 5.8, well, 6.1, struck up here on the north side. So if you take the first 5.8, plus all the 4s and 5s, plus the 5.4, plus the 5.0, plus the other 5.8 to 5.9 to 6.1, that's a boatload of movement for Japan compared to where we were over the past several months without much movement at all, maybe in the 4 and 5 range at the most. Now here we are, and this is big time movement up on the north side, right next to Hokkaido, going further north up into the Kermadex, and then further up, oh, I say Kermadex, up into the Kuril Islands, then further over to the east, we have a stepping stone path of fours taking place. The stepping stone path of fours. I should probably open up a USGS plate boundary map at this point. Let me get a display capture turned on so you can see what I see. It's just a little bit better. We'll jump back over here and take a look at it up in Alaska coming out of the West Pacific. So coming out of Japan... Going up, across, over into Alaska. This is the North Pacific, obviously. The plate boundary is marked in red from the USGS. And the stepping stone path of earthquakes over the last 48 hours shows us that it's moved out of Japan and started to move over into Alaska. Another way to look at it is there's a wave spreading from Japan to Alaska. And all the earthquakes along the way are the wave peak peaks of the very low frequency that's thousands of miles apart in between each wave peak. Once we focus in on the edge of a plate, then that wave focuses in just like a wave reflecting off a wave tank. So looking at this, you'll see we have all the same sized earthquakes coming out of the West Pacific, and I mean exactly the same size, going over to 4.6 in Alaska from yesterday. Bering Strait struck on Russia's side, up next to their giant over-the-horizon radars that are placed over there. But I'm more concerned with the other 4.6 down here on the coast of Vancouver, B.C. This is at the north side of the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. And I would just like to take you over and show it to you here on the USGS map again, the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. Up here on the north side, 
Whenever we get movement up here, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, we see movement go down to the east by southeast. And that takes me into what's going on here in the United States, which is really the whole point of doing my update here, was I had a commenter over on YouTube leave me a comment about something going on in the Hudson River and Hudson Bay, but mainly the Hudson River over here on the East Coast. And at this point, maybe we should open up a copy of good old Google Earth so we can go look it up and show everybody internationally where it is. Now, while that's loading, we'll go over here. And this is where the people left the comment. Okay, blessings flow. And now the Hudson River is bubbling and journalism is watery weirdness. And they've got a face palm right there. I don't blame them for the face palm because, man, that is some silliness. Look at what's going on here. Watery weirdness. Check it out. Methane bubbles. That's not oxygen. There's no oxygen coming up out of the ground there, guys. We've got methane bubbles coming up on the shores of the Hudson River going on for many, many miles. Now, when I saw that, look at the date on this. It's July 13th, like three weeks ago. And it's just, again, oh, there's a big power plant over there on the side, but that's not coming from the power plant. Now, we could talk about ionization and what's going on in the crust. They'll have some all kinds of explanations for this, I'm sure, the mainstream media. But this is the East Coast. This is a big deal. And then this takes me into Monkey Works. Monkey Works, awesome channel. Covers aviation and covers movement of military, uh, mainly aviation and weather and does some weather modification uh, talk and also study of, of course at live he does these live broadcasts where he tracks the planes I tuned in last week and I heard him talking about a plane flying over the Hudson River some kind of NASA plane a LIDAR plane well he it didn't actually say that but he brought up LIDAR I believe he brought up LIDAR which is laser direction arranging it's like it's like radar but with laser it reflects off and comes back. We use LIDAR in, like, the job site when you got a laser, uh, well, you got all kinds of stuff now. Laser level, you've got a, a laser uh, tape measure, and all that's doing is sending a beam out. And it's reflecting back. LIDAR, okay? And But why would they be flying over the Hudson River? Right? Now it makes sense. Okay, so Hudson River. Here we go. When you see right where it is, it's going to all make sense in about two seconds. Here we are. All right. Why don't I have my rivers marked? Well, I mean, you can see it here. Hudson River goes all the way down and meets in here. Okay. But I don't know exactly where on the Hudson River the bubbles are coming from. But you can already see. I mean, it goes up. We're going right down here to the bay and of course out to the ocean now there's high voltage power lines through here you know what let's go let's go back to the story here and just see okay showing bubbling along the hudson river shoreline at bowline point park at the next to the power plant well helps to read the full story Next to the power plant, uh, they can't ignore that. Uh, Bowline Point Park, New York. Ah, okay. I mean, this this further reduces down where we're going. Wow. All right. Well, all kinds of wonderful things here. Let's just hope. Let's hope it's not a natural gas line broken there. Maybe they put the natural gas line there through the water. Maybe that's what they did. Yeah, yeah, they must have put it along the water. Wow. Okay, now that we know where it is, I have to bring up the other thing that just happened up here. The earthquakes. Multiple earthquakes striking right next to it. Within, what do you think that is, 50 miles? Within 50 to 75 miles at the most, we're dealing with a series of earthquakes on the edge of the North American Craton. Now, let me get a Craton diagram on here. Look up in the northeast. Do you see that? Hey, my internet's getting shut off right now. Down to nothing. That's okay. I'm recording. See that? Doesn't matter if I get shut off. Shut me off all you want. Won't affect me at all. Okay, so here's the edge of the Craton. Wow, that's fine. Hey, oh yeah, go ahead and make it green. It doesn't matter. Ain't gonna stop me now. Now I know you're trying to stop me. I'm going to definitely go upload this to YouTube. I was just going to record it for the sake of recording. 
Now we're going to take this to the world. All right, well, here it is. Bubbling on the shores of the Hudson Bay, right? Or Hudson River, and going to the Hudson Bay. Right next to, that's not the Hudson Bay, I'm sorry. Hudson Bay is all the way up north in Canada. Hudson River, and we can't ignore it with the earthquakes next to it on the edge of the North American Craton. Which leads me back over to my post that I made back over here on YouTube to begin with, which is this. I feel a tiny bit sad for the people who denied earthquake forecasting, saying it was not possible. Denying because someone else told them it was impossible, or denying the results because they somehow missed the progression of earthquakes, which happen weekly. Because they missed it, many of them don't like being told that it's there. Or being shown it is happening. It is not up for debate. The earthquakes are going in a certain direction and pattern every week. It is forecastable. And here's the last 48 hours worth of earthquakes. I took a screenshot of it, just so the people who don't tune into the uh, stream, but I mean, you can see it. We've got our fours on the West Coast. We've got our threes going up to 3.9 down in Texas now. By the way, check Texas off the list. I warned Texas for a four. Texas back off the list. And a spread going across the uneven edge of the Craton over to the East Coast and up the East Coast all the way to New Hampshire. This is 48 hours. Here's a whole week. It doesn't change anything. All it does is actually fill in the areas in between. Our fours on the West Coast, threes going up to 3.9 in Texas, twos going across the rest of the plate, fours, threes, twos, yet once again, every week this way. And sometimes the push is so great that we'll see fours go across the plate. Fours on the West Coast, fours in the Midwest, fours on the East Coast. Or fives. We've seen fives on the West Coast, fives in the Midwest, fives on the East Coast, all in the course of a few days' time, spreading from the West to the East. The earthquakes, not the plate moving. So I have to show this all to you. This is all taking place. So Japan started to move, as expected. Now I'd like to also show you somewhere else that got hit that we warned. All the way over here at the Iran-Iraq border. I was very specific about this. I brought up the two earthquake, two sets of earthquakes on either side, one coming out of Turkey, one coming out of Iran, and this was the middle point, and I brought up Tehran, which was right here at the red arrow, and then I drew a diagonal line over here to the Iraq border, and this was the open area in between where there were no other earthquakes. It's now been checked off the list. 4.3 struck right at the spot that I was talking about in the update just a couple days ago. Today, a new 4.4 struck, two of the same size quakes going around both sides of the plate boundary directly on the arrows. I call this the plate boundary on the north side of Iran, even though the USGS has jack squat there. Do you want to see? Check it out. Over here at Iran. Here's the new earthquake in Iran. Notice how USGS has nothing up there, right? Now, the previous earthquake, the 4.4, right over here at the Iran-Iraq border on the plate boundary. Now, the reason I have an arrow there is because the mountains themselves take the shape of a flowing river almost this is iran right here and you can see it it looks like flowing rivers going around something like a rock and a river blo blocking a flow but these are mountain ranges and in my last update i talked about the flow going around the north side and the south side south side's already been hit north side is being hit now and let me just make sure you can see that too okay so both are coming together over here where Crete has been hit as well as Greece. Crete and Greece and Romania all have been struck in the last few hours. So, or when I say Crete, I'm sorry. Rhodes. Rhodes and Greece. I warned right here and we got hit right here. 4.5 is where we are. We are one magnitude or less under. If we take the 4.5 plus the 4.2, we're at 4.72. So 4.7's worth of energy on both sides of Crete. Yes, we are within 200 miles. So if that's all we see, that's the earthquake we were expecting. However, both rings overlap directly on Crete, so I would still watch Crete. I mean, this is day two of the watch. So day two of the watch, we're one magnitude under, and we're within 200 miles. I mean, we could already check it off the list as an earthquake forecast did and issue a new warning for Crete. But I'm going to keep the original one going, 4.5. 4.2 on both sides. Looks like fives coming right in the middle. Speaking of coming right in the middle of something, look at that. We're going around the outside middle edge of Europe in Romania. One magnitude less than what's down here to the south. So hold on. 
Just like the United States goes from fours to threes to twos across the plate, guess what happens in Europe? Fours to threes to threes. Basically, there's not an, uh, enough space for this to spread out any more than that. So we go fours, threes, and sometimes UK will get twos. But then we pull back up out here at the end with a new same-sized earthquake that came into the system to begin with. So if we're going in with 4.5, going around with threes, we'll come back out with 4.5 on the other side or very close to it. Maintenance. Ma again, a maintenance of energy. Maintaining momentum. This wave is going across and trying to equalize out across the whole planet. So a little section like this, it gets caught up in for a little bit. It breaks and goes around it. It's like a flowing river. The rest of the earthquakes going across Europe, for instance, go right up across Italy again. Also into Slovenia. Or Slovakia, I'm sorry. Over to the west, we go down across the Pyrenees. The Pyrenees are the mountain range in between France and Spain. Then we focus in on Gibraltar down here to the south with a little swarm north of Morocco. This is the way the energy flows through South Europe. It goes up to Italy, back down across the Pyrenees, out and over to the Azores. And you can expect the same-sized earthquakes that are striking in middle and south central part of Europe to go down and out and over, and you'll see them strike out here. In the past, last year, for instance, we got a break. Well, this past year, this year, I mean, but over this past year, we got a break here going from South Spain down to Morocco, which redirected the flow that normally goes out to the Azores, and it sent it slamming right down here into the Canary Islands with the big eruption that took place right as it started to receive the seismic flow coming across the planet. And every time a new flow came across, a new series of eruptions, the eruption carried on here for like 90 days. It was insane. Coming out of the West Pacific, a stepping stone path of the same sized earthquakes. 4.5, 4.9, 4.6, 4.4, do you see it? Stepping stone path going around the plate boundary, coming out of Indonesia. Let me show you Indonesia here on the plate boundary map. So the earthquakes are literally making a crescent shape, going up into Asia, following the plate boundary, as if it was some kind of wave guide. Again, going around the outside edge, up into Nepal, and over to the Indian Ocean. Well, what's up in Nepal and over in the Indian Ocean? Well, the plate boundary, of course. Up into Nepal and over in the Indian Ocean on the western side here in the central Indian Ocean. The whole section is moved, going back down and across, all the way back into Indonesia. Again, it's indisputable. This is the last 48 hours worth of earthquakes. We make a split-off point and go up to Japan. Now, I already talked about this, but we have a warning going in Japan, which I'm not going to expire yet. Going in North Japan from the coast of Fukushima up to Hokkaido for the potential of up to 7.0. The longer we go, the better for it not happening. And furthermore, the more we see energy flow out towards Alaska and the United States, the better Japan's starting to look for the escaping of the energy. The wave was trapped there. Now clearly the wave is moving over towards the United States going across Alaska. So are we going to get a 7 on top of the 6.5? Well, the 6.5 or 6.4, I'm sorry. And you can go look at it. It's not up for debate. You can go look at it, guys. We can go over to the origin page if you want to, and we can go roast the USGS if we want to. But I don't really want to do that, but we'll go over and show you. Magnitude list, weighted magnitude or body magnitude, well, I mean, which way you're going to go. Like I said, I normally throw out the high end and low end, right? So going down the list, first right here at the top of the list is 6.4. Normally I would throw that out. But when I'm scrolling down the list and I start seeing 6.7, 6.8, 6.9 and so forth reported by my, many stations, or is it 6.7? 6.6, 6.7, 6.8 reported from multiple stations around the region. And the USGS has downgraded it by a full magnitude, which they're known for doing, for being just jackasses about it. Then I'm just going to say it. It was a mid-range 6, and that fully fulfills the forecast for Hokkaido. That is the earthquake we're looking for. They're trying to hide it. That's what it looks like. Occam's Razor. They said it couldn't be done. They start downgrading earthquakes really crazy in spots where I issue warnings. Hokkaido in particular. And then all of a sudden, nobody notices because it's been downgraded. Yeah, it's starting to look like they're trying to hide. Again, it's only happening in spots really pretty much where we're issuing forecasts, and I do not issue forecasts all over the planet. Certainly if not for that size. So if I warn for a 7 point something, 7 to 7.1, and a 6.5 hits, that's the quake we're looking for. They do this crazy downgrade stuff to get it down a magnitude under. That seems a little weird since they called for my arrest. USGS did. In writing. 
in writing. Oh my God. Their customer service center wrote back one of my viewers, told them it was unfortunate they couldn't have me arrested. Stupidest thing they could have ever written. You could use that in court against them. Anyway, let's go to the United States and talk about this. So I warned Southern California down here from San Diego going into North Mexico for up to 5.0 level activity. Gulf of California got hit by two 4.7s next day, right here down on the south side. You see that, two 4.7s. However, I am still watching Southern California for the potential of a break to take place over the next few days. Now this ties in with the Hudson Bay, this ties in with the rest of the United States, and the earthquakes going across the North American Craton. When the United States starts to go into excessive overdrive with multiple earthquakes, fours and fives and sixes, in this case fours and fives, on the west coast, and then fours going over to Texas, all of a sudden what starts to happen is over on the east coast, we start to get mystery booms and rumbles, explosions, methane bursts, and all those kinds of things, compression events on the east edge of the North American Craton. One more time, here's the Craton diagram. Whoops. Here's the Craton diagram. And you can see it, it matches perfectly going up the East Coast. So to have major bubbling next to a power plant up there, I, I would not associate the power plant normally, but with the power plant and the electrical generation that we're talking about, maybe potentially, that that is something we have to pay attention to. Ionization that happens in the ground, electricity in the ground, and it precipitates earthquake activity. The power lines and the power companies. It, it happens. It's happened all over the world this way. I, again, maybe you've never heard of this, but we've been keeping track for 12 years. I can tell you this. We've seen them next to nuclear power plants, solar, wind, uh, uh, big electrical substations, uh, next to CERN. Okay, these electrical-related earthquakes. You've got to understand that the electricity and the power lines is working on VLF, and so are earthquakes. So earthquakes are moving on VLF. That's the wave we're talking about, a VLF precipitating wave that causes the earthquakes it follows power lines railroad tracks in some cases as it's going through the earth it, it does it'll go around the outside edge of the craton but the earthquakes will precipitate and strike next to these points as well as drill points volcanoes and other geothermal spots so not only the power lines but when i see bubbles next to a power plant and the plates under serious pressure and there's a flow of electrical Energy going across the plate, basically. You can't ignore it. I'll give you another example of when this happened up here in Rhode Island. The plate was under stress. Fours and fives were striking on the West Coast. Fours were going across the plate. Rhode Island. A woman was sitting on the beach with a bunch of other people. And the beach exploded out of the blue. Literally blast happened, but not fireball. A buildup of gas came out. Methane gas threw her 15 feet away across the beach. They tried to blame it on seaweed being buried and methane from seaweed. Right after that, the mystery booms and rumbles started up there, and they tried to blame those on sonic booms from the military. So it turns out the professionals and the media and stuff, they come up with all these BS cover stories to explain away things that they said were impossible. They said it was impossible for there to be a flow of energy to go across the plate, for instance. So when it does, they make up bullshit stories to cover for the explosions and other things that happen. Let me give you another example. There were fours and fives going across the United States before several years ago. Then a rare four struck down here. Or I'm sorry, a rare five struck in Texas. And then a rare four struck down here at the Alabama-Mississippi border. Twelve hours later, due north, up here in Michigan right along the shores of Lake Michigan, going over here on the west side of Michigan. The same sized earthquake struck that was down here in the south, down at the pumping operations, by the way. There were pumping operations they struck next to, going out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So first an earthquake down here, then one up here in the middle edge of the Craton. Now guess what happened within a couple weeks after that? A huge methane burst came out of the Great Lakes up here, right at the Canada-Michigan border, out of a golf course, a golf course had a lake in it, and out of the lake, it was, it looked like jets shooting. The most insane amount of methane coming up. And people tried to say it was a pipeline break, but it turned out it wasn't a pipeline. It was a natural methane burst. Post-glacial rebound effect, they tried to call it. P-G-R-E. Post-glacial rebound is what they tried to say it was. 
but it was a methane burst that was coming up from many layers down below from sediment that was caused by the plate being compressed. And the earthquake activity that came just before it, just a few weeks or less. So now again, when we got bubbling on the Hudson River, you cannot ignore it when the rest of the freaking plate is going into overdrive and starting to move again. And it goes in spurts like this. It doesn't do this all the time. It only does it when the plate gets pushed from the northwest. And that only happens after a lot. Let me look at it. Coming out of the West Pacific, it goes up across Alaska, bump right into the northwest edge of the plate. And then all of a sudden, this starts to go down, going across the edge of the Craton. Anyway, let's go over to California. So California is still on the warning list. However, you were struck about 300 miles south of where I warned. Three, I'm 300 miles off. Ooh. Some guy came over and said, it's no big deal for you to get it down within 200 miles, this guy on YouTube. Anybody can do that, they said. I go, oh, really? Oh, really? Anybody can do it? And you're... <laughs> <clears throat> Anybody can do it if you follow the method. But, yeah, they're like, no, it's no big deal to do earthquake forecasting within the magnitude. Anybody can do that. And I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, man, okay, tell that to the professionals, please, because everybody said it was impossible, and they all accused me of faking the earthquakes to make it look like there was a progression. And that was up to this past year, so I don't know. Maybe something's changed in the last few months. <laughs> Okay, a line of earthquakes coming down out of California. Anything new here? Diagonal line going through the Bay Area. Again, nothing new there. The only difference is we're on the flank of Mount Diablo now in the Bay Area. On the north side, we have a big stack of earthquakes. Well, not big. It's, it's noteworthy. We've seen it much larger go up off the screen very far. These earthquakes are at a volcano called Clear Lake Volcano that's been drilled into by humans. And I'll get the coordinates on this. Make note of the name. I mean, the name says it all. The geysers of California. But, again, a picture speaks a thousand words. This is for the new folks here who've never seen it before. A swarm of earthquakes here. I wonder why. Well, it's a volcano. But on the side of the volcano, and I apologize, my connection is running extremely slow for some reason. I guess we're going really, 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 really slow today. Maybe I need to upgrade my three internet connections that I have to maintain to stay connected because I get shut off so much. Let's go see. Are we getting shut off? Eh, I don't know. Not really. It's just being held up by Google. So these are geothermal pumping operations, this splotch on the ground that Google's refusing to load. And, oh, there we go. All you got to do is say something. And we're on the edge of Clear Lake, which, of course, is a... Holocene volcano from the current modern age. But we go down to the south and we go down the San Andreas. Everybody knows about the San Andreas. You've all heard of it. It's a diagonal line shape here going through the plate itself. You see it. And we can go back to the USGS plate boundary map, which I show all the time, the red line. The red line matches it. As a matter of fact, the San Andreas is the plate boundary. We just call it the San Andreas, but it goes down to the south and meets up in the Gulf of California, which just broke apart right down here with two 4.7s. So we broke up here with a 4.6. Recapping, 4.6 just struck up here off the coast of Vancouver. 4.7 struck down here to the south. In the middle point in between, we are going across the San Andreas. The, the creeping section, no less. Diagonal line of quakes gets down to here. But once we get down right to about here, we jump over to the east and we jump over to the west. Instead of going straight down there, rest of the San Andreas into L.A. We're jumping over into the valley. Guess what's there in the valley? Drill points. Drill points for oil and gas. And I'm not trying to pick on oil and gas industry, guys. We see geothermal pumping operations get hit, too. But the reason we're jumping off the San Andreas, first of all, look where the San Andreas is, the diagonal line. And then we jump right over here. Look where they drilled. They drilled right up to it. So is anybody shocked that... When you perforate something that goes right up to something that's already broken, that perforation is going to spread the break. Again, think of multiple slabs of stone on top of each other. I don't care how thick they are. And you've got a big break through them, through the multiple slabs. And then you come in on the top of the side of one of them and start doing this for over a long distance too. Not just one little perforation point. You go gangbusters and do hundreds if not thousands of them 
all the way down the San Andreas. Here's San Andreas, and you do nothing but drill points all the way down. And this is all drilled. In case, do you see it? Hold on. This is all drilled. And it, it looks like... I have to wait for it to load because Google is literally not loading the images. You saw it was loading fast just a second ago. But when you start showing the oil pumping operations, it's like there's some kind of filter that kicks in. I, I, it's happened enough that I've done this for 12 years. It's really like there is some kind of deal they've worked out with the oil companies that if you try to show it live or something, it'll it'll sit there and load for 20 minutes. But then you go try to show a farm field and it's all good with you know within whoa what just happened there? It's all good within you know a second it'll load. So anyway, all of this is drilled. Every one of these little pads on the ground, we can just go along and just follow it back up to the north. You see them. There's just hundreds of thousands of them. Drill points mimicking the edge of this, which is the San Andreas. So we go down the San Andreas. We jump off the San Andreas over to those drill points where they start. Are you shocked? How about the California-Nevada border? Well, at the California-Nevada border, we're going between Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake again, which is a supervolcano caldera. There's another supervolcano at the California-Nevada border down here, Central California. That's Long Valley Caldera. However, in the last two days, the number of earthquakes here at the California-Nevada border has gone down as the flow went over to Texas, and a new 4, or a 3.9, struck at the pumping operations in West Texas. Now, all of these operations in Texas and Oklahoma, or all of these earthquakes, are directly next to or at oil pumping operations, every single one of them. So you guys can fact check me on that if you need to. It shouldn't be too big of a shock. Uh, Texas has millions of drill points. So this earthquake is in Texas. Notice how it says White City, New Mexico. USGS has been doing this with this swarm in particular because it's been getting so big. And if you list it in New Mexico as opposed to Texas, even though it's in Texas, use your triangulation or whatever to... It throws people off who pay attention to the USGS site. All the normies and all the professors and all the eggheads and all the people who just use the USGS, trusting them. Blind trust. We all know what happens when you give somebody blind trust, especially somebody who's not worthy of trusting. They'll abuse it, and that's exactly what they do. They'll tell everybody that this is in New Mexico. Really, it's in Texas. It's a Texas oil pumping earthquake swarm. I would be willing to bet that they're out there now doing new drilling. So, do we have time to wait for all this to load? I don't want to complain too much. You know what I mean? But all of these... And, again, from this level, it's kind of hard to see. You can start to look for the little pads in the ground. Now, they go over to the west. I'm just showing them to you here because they're easy to see. This is just one little small pumping operation, maybe about 10,000 different wells. Now, we go over across this way, and we actually carry on. The wells carry on into the back foothills here of the Great Dun. Now, on the other side, we've got volcanoes, but I'd say, again, we're within a mile or two of the pumping operations right here. And then we go over to the Gangbusters pumping operations, where there's so many, it looks like, well, here, let's wait. I can sip my coffee while it's loading. I need a 56K modem. Let me just do some modem sounds. <laughs> There we go. All those drill points. Just so many of them. I mean, look how many there are just at this one. It, again, it's insane overdrive. We get into millions, guys. We got, we got numbers of millions where they've done whole Texas counties that way. Look at it. These aren't houses or forestry clear cuts. Every one of those is an oil well. It's in low res now because it won't load, but it just, we just go on and on and on and on and on. And you, you get the picture how many there are. I'm not complaining about oil. I drive a Hummer. My, my plates say harp, H-A-A-R-P. Not harp like the kind you play. It's the harp, the kind the scientists play. There's no such thing as weather modification, they said. Turns out they were totally lying. Or wrong. I don't give them benefit of the doubt. Maybe they were just wrong. Yeah, it turns out you can. Anyway. Oh, did you hear? I was proved right on electromagnetic radiation modifying the weather. It's now an option on the NOAA site. You want to see it? Hey, hold on. Hold on. Everybody, take a look at the screen right now. I was proved right on electromagnetic radiation modifying the weather. I posted it on my community page. I found this myself. Alert. 
Huge news in case you missed it. I was proved right on weather modification from radio waves. The U.S. government, NOAA, created a weather modification website about a year ago, November 2021. And it says directly on the website that weather modification is capable of being done by electromagnetic means. Radio waves. Link here, number eight on the list. Let's wait for this one to load. I don't care how long it takes. Activities subject to reporting. And the following, when conducted as a weather modification activities, shall be subject to reporting using lasers or other sources of electromagnetic radiation. Oh, I thought it was impossible, everyone. I thought it was a mistake. I thought it was birds and bugs. I thought I was wrong. Oh, my gosh. Everybody said it. And now I'm proved right. So, can HARP modify the weather? Well, electromagnetic radiation can. Does HARP produce electromagnetic radiation? Does it? I wonder. We should ask. Does HARP produce electromagnetic radiation? And if anybody says no, they are the biggest, either A, misinformed person, or B, lying sack of you know what, and we are not going to back down or go away now. I should theoretically find the people with the deepest pockets who smeared me publicly in writing, libeled me, and go after them legally for it. And Google, YouTube, all those little pop-up messages down below all my videos and anybody else's denying that weather could be modified by HARP or any other, calling it a conspiracy theorist. Conspiracy theory? You called me a conspiracy theorist for it. You try to ruin my life. You shut me down for it. Shouldn't you be held responsible for the damages you caused since you were wrong? It's right here on the NOAA site. Electromagnetic radiation can modify the weather. If you have it in print saying it's not, you're either misinformed or a liar. Now that you've been, been being informed for the last several weeks, and it, you have been being informed. I've been telling you for years, but people said it was impossible. We were showing live examples of it happening. People accused me of faking it. The live examples. On radar, they said I was somehow hacking the radar. So why does that matter with earthquakes? Well, it turns out electromagnetic radiation gets caught up in the Earth's magnetic field and gets taken down to ground. And radio waves, electromagnetic radiation, converts into DC, direct current, alternating current. AC in the air, radio waves, turns to DC when it gets absorbed by the Earth. Did you know that? It's true. And when AC converts to DC, it's called efficiency scaling. And they found out that HARP pulsing up here in Alaska would create plasma, high-frequency pulsing at the atmosphere and the ionosphere up above Alaska would create a big bubble of Vibrating plasma in the air. A giant ring, upside down top hat shape, like a speaker almost, but three dimensionally in a sphere. And it would vibrate and create very low frequency coming out of that big plasma bubble. And they could use high frequency to create the plasma bubble and, and vibrate it, punch it, pump it up and punch it down. And then it would vibrate and emit a radio wave, an electromagnetic VLF radio wave, that would follow the electromagnetic field lines of the Earth all the way down here to HARP's magnetic conjugate point, electromagnetic conjugate point. So does HARP emit electromagnetic radiation? Yeah, it sure does. And since electromagnetic radiation is now proved to or at least accepted that it can modify the weather now the question of whether or not harp can modify the weather is now moot yes it can the only question is are they now and what are they doing to prevent it anyway off the coast of new zealand there's a spot where stanford university put a vlf buoy for the harp one hop buoy experiments vlf buoy off the coast of new zealand and what they found was that radio waves would come down from space, the magnetic field lines of the Earth, and pass through the ocean and go down into the ocean floor here and reflect back off the crust and come back out and go back to harp and bounce back and forth. And they found that when it goes down into the crust, 
efficiency scaling takes place. And the AC of the radio wave converts into DC power down in the crust. I don't know how they measured that, but and then it came back out with a little bit of loss of energy. It went back, vibrating back and forth like a plucked string on a harp all the way around the planet. Magnetic conjugate point. Now, you know what's weird about that? If we go through the planet here, guess where we come out? CERN. <laughs> go through the planet on the antipode is North Italy right here at Switzerland's border. I'm not joking here. We can just turn it off and look through the planet. See on the opposite side, there's New Zealand kind of there, like on the opposite side down. You see that? That's New Zealand rotating the opposite way. Okay. So Harp's antipode, or I'm sorry, Harp's magnetic conjugate point is the exact physical antipode of CERN coming through the planet off the coast of New Zealand. So it does matter with the radio waves because they convert and go down into the crust. And then, like I told you, VLF and earthquakes. So it's all a huge thing that ties together weather modification with radio waves. We can see earthquake activity happen next to the transmitters that are pulsing the storms to begin with. Just as an example, why does it matter? It ties together. It does. VLF, high frequency, weather modification in the sky, up in the atmosphere and ionosphere, and layers going down into the Earth. So what are we going to look for? We're watching still over here for a few things in the West Pacific. I'll give it another two days for Japan just to see if we're going to be flowing out over to the east. I will consider this already an earthquake forecast hit. 100%. Nobody can convince me otherwise with those amount of sixes on the list and the USGS downgrade. Oh, look, the USGS brought it up to 5.9. Are you shitting me? Oh, guys, come on, man. You're killing me, man. You're freaking killing me, man. You're freaking killing me, dude. Serious. Serious, man. If I did this, uh, two days later, you come in and freaking revise it down. Dude, come on, guy. Guy, 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 guy. Guys, guys, sip my coffee. It's almost blunt 30 at this point. I, yes, I am recording this and I'm going to go put it on YouTube. I don't care if you judge me or not. Go ahead and judge me all you want. Five point nine. All right. Anyway, I appreciate the charity. I'm going to stand outside the USGS headquarters with a bell and a little orange bucket. My volcano orange bucket. Ding, ding. Alms for the paw. Alms for the paw. And, then, you know, they'll toss my flick cigarette butts at me as they stand outside and smoke. All right. You guys, I, I don't have very much else for you other than to tell you, I think this is the earthquake we're looking for over in Japan. Now they brought it up to 5.9. That's sus. Super sus. We're at, like, suspect level number 25. On the sus Ajita scale, we're at, like, S5. West Coast United States, I'm still watching Southern California for one more day. One more day. Texas already got hit with a 4, 3.9. We already got 4.7 to 5.0 just south of the border. I'm off by like 100 miles from my 200-mile two, warning area, so 300 miles total from the center. That's the earthquake most likely we're looking for in Southern California, but I don't want to count it out yet because we haven't gone all the way over to the East Coast yet. Instead, we have a 4 in Texas and bubbling over in the Hudson River. From three weeks ago but bubbling the Hudson River three weeks ago still going on now that's the part that I just we got to pay attention to that somebody give a big shout out aside from me to monkey works I'm gonna put a link to his channel down below you should go subscribe first of all the guy's cool he's nice secondly he's covering troop movements and all kinds of stuff weather modification and every other thing He's a, he's a good guy to top it off. Just a nice fellow. So, check out Monkey Works if you can. No pressure. I don't get anything for recommending it. We're not in some kind of network or group or anything. Guy doesn't even know me. I don't know him. I don't even know his name. I know him as Monkey Works. All right. Word up. Much love. Be safe. West Pacific going into overdrive. We're watching in the West Pacific for a new round of deep earthquakes to take place. We're also watching for 6.0 level activity to develop over the next few days here in between our two sets of fives. We're looking for a new development to take place, a new push to spread out. But this is just an update to bring you up to speed as to what's currently going on, tell you about the spots that got hit that I warned. I mean, come on, 
the Iraq-Iran border, right? <laughs> and the north side, both. I mean, come on, there it is, right there. Both, both spots that I talked about in my last update hit. And it's not like it gets hit every week. Also, Greece started to move big time. Both sides of Greece. So it was there. It was weird. basically a ring around the Aegean Sea a day ago of small earthquakes, now replaced by mid to upper fours all the way around. I didn't even talk about Central and South America. Central and South America moved. Puerto Rico got hit. In case you were keeping track of areas that I warned, Puerto Rico hit directly. One, over to the west, but now on land. And it went up to four point something. And look at the stack. Nice stack of swarm of earthquakes. Plus 4.0 level. Plus a deep earthquake down below it. You can check Puerto Rico off the list if you're keeping track of areas that I warned. The only other spot left to move over here in the Caribbean now is Venezuela. Terremoto warning. Terremoto means earthquake in Spanish. Let the people in Venezuela know 5.0 level is coming right over here on the edge of the plate boundary coming out of the Caribbean. Then out here in the mid-Atlantic are letter X's, Ascension Island. And this one out here, we could talk about this some other time, but this 4.8 out at the mid-Atlantic Ridge, I want, you, I want you to look on both sides of it. Look up to the east-northeast up here and look over to the west. See that? See that? Look down here. Wow. Ah, it's another one, huh? How pretty interesting. It, I can't believe I didn't notice it until last night. How about a third one down to the south? Right here. Going from South America. Straight across. Over to South Africa. It's indisputable. Fracture zones that are connecting across. And under seamount chains that are connecting straight across. And right in the middle is where we're getting it. I, again, I can't believe it took till yesterday for me to notice this. So we have two connection points across where the flow is clearly coming across. And it breaks when we're moving over in Africa and South America. And it's the halfway point between the two. I can't believe I didn't notice that for this long. But it's a connection point, 100%, coming out of Africa, down to the south, up to the north, and we're right along this undersea mount chain to the north. And it's a connecting line between South America and Africa, directly connecting across. Almost like we're connecting across from South America to Russia. From Peru to Russia, we're connected. You guys know that? Coming out of Peru, you can see it here. Coming out of South Peru, going around and up, we could follow the fracture zone. Let me zoom in on it. It turns into undersea mounts, the undersea mount chain. It meets up with the Hawaiian Island chain and goes up to Russia and Kamchatka. It divides the Pacific in half. And all the professionals miss that. So, look, there's a flow of seismic that's going across these things that's drawing my eye to it to begin with. I mean, I wouldn't just look there randomly. So, the seismic flow that goes across these areas is drawn my eye to these areas to begin with that everybody somehow missed. And including this spot that's like a road connecting from Africa to South America and the seismic flow across it. Come on. A bridge. Seismic flow across the bridge. Turns out there's a seismic flow across the freaking planet and everybody missed it. I, I, I can't believe it. But there it is. I'm not bragging or anything. I'm, I Actually, I showed the whole world. I showed the whole world and it shouldn't be that big of a deal. There's a spread going across the planet. Now that we know that, we can forecast based upon it. At least we can watch it. We can watch it flow like a river. And we all know that when a river floods, it's not exact science, right? I mean, you're never going to know the exact inches that it's going to come up. You have a forecasted amount and so forth. If it matches, it does. But you can watch the flood come your way. And if you don't get out of the way or you don't pay attention to it, you're just a... I don't know, man. I don't want to call you names or anything. Just an ignoramus or whatever you want to call it. That if you ignore something like that, if you ignore a flowing river going across an area... And it starts to flood, and you're just sitting there, and you get flooded away, and you're like, I don't understand what's happening. It's insane. So this is like a flow uh, that goes across the plates. To ignore it is foolish. To deny it is, well, not only foolish, you can't deny it. It's not even deniable. If you deny it, you're just, I don't know, I mean, you're a denier or something. Kind of no point in debating deniers because they're denying something that's on the screen, or it's like it's kind of like you ever meet somebody that just denies something for the sake of denying it. Like you tell them that the sky is blue and they say no, it's cyan. You tell them there's clouds in the sky and they tell you no, it's water molecules. That kind of shit. 
So, yeah, we don't even listen to those people anymore because they said this was impossible and accused me of faking the earthquakes. I stopped listening after that. Forgive me, of course. When, but, I mean, once people say you're faking something that you're not, I mean, why, why would you even listen to them? That's when I knew I was on to something. When everybody else was, like, beating their chest, saying, you are a nah, 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 conspiracy, nah, 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 there's no such thing. I'm like, okay, I'm on to something because, man, there is a progression going on here. They're accusing me of putting them on here. Okay, I don't know. unless they're putting them on here, we got, we got ourselves an actual progression of quakes that's happening. Earthquakes are not random. And that's where people were when I came along. They said earthquakes were randomly happening all over the planet. And they're not. They're following the plate boundaries and create on edges. That's not random. And the distribution isn't random. And the magnitudes aren't random. They're all associated with one another. Turns out there's a force spreading around the planet. It's dropping off earthquakes all the way along the way. There's a new force. Well, not a new force. It's always been there. A newly discovered force that causes earthquakes. And I call it QLF, quake low frequency. Or EQLF, earthquake low frequency. And it's a certain type of magnetic or possible electric wave that's very low frequency, where the peak waves are hundreds, if not thousands of miles apart, and each earthquake is dropping off along the way. I've said that now three times during this update. I want to drive home that point. It's not impossible. It's happening right here before your eyes. I'm, like, I'm not faking the quakes. There it is. Sorry. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and go ahead and upload it over on YouTube. Now, what's going to happen here is we will premiere it back on YouTube, and you can watch it back throughout the rest of the week. And in a day or so, I will get a new forecast together for the West Pacific, now that Japan's been hit. And the United States, were 100 miles off from my warned area. So now that these earthquakes have started, oh, Tehran and Iran and so forth, and Greece, now that they've all been hit, I have to issue a new series of forecasts for the next round, which way it's going to go. And sooner or later, other people will be able to, I think, should be able to repeat the method. I know Casimiro Cervantes has done it. So, I, I can never say his name right. Sorry, Cass. <laughs> I can't even say my own name right. Come on, man. Okay, all right. Much love, guys. You be safe. Peace out.